Before you declare your business a failure, watch this. You see, you might have been running your business for years or just months, but you might be feeling incredibly frustrated that you are not making decent money, whatever that is for you, from your business. In this video today, I want to speak about that and how to change things for you and your business for the long term so that you have a financially healthy business and one that it lets you live the life that you want to live. So are you in that place where you feel like you're putting in the work, but you're just not getting the results? Your business feels like a failure. Well, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that the money that is coming in, that you are generating for sales, you manage to turn that into profit as much as possible. Now, if you have not heard of this book or read this book, Profit First by Mike Malkowitz, I highly, highly recommend that you do. And you can get a copy as well by heading over to annetteandco.co.uk slash pfbook. I'll also put the link in the description to this video for you to be able to get that. But this book explains all about cash management in a business. And once we get real control over cash management, we then become more profitable. I promise. Because you see, I've been there. I've been at the place where I was running a six-figure business, but I was taking home very, very little money from it for me and my family to enjoy. And after reading Profit First and implementing some of the things in there, along with some other steps that I am going to speak to you about now, I turned it around from a place where I was taking home very, very little money from my business to 18 months later, where my family were being fully supported by my take home and my husband had become a stay-at-home dad full-time to our, at that point, little boy, and I was heavily pregnant, so soon to be a little girl as well. When we are taking home very little money from our business, it can feel like we're failing. It can feel like every new customer or client we bring on, it seems like there's no extra money, and it gets really downheartening. It can feel like, what is the point? I'm putting all this energy into my business. I may as well get a job. At least I would be getting paid more. At least I would be getting holidays. At least I would be getting maternity leave. All those kinds of things. But what I recommend, as well as reading Profit First, is to plug what I call money leaks in your business. So the way that you can do this is by a simple exercise to identify and eradicate them. So what I want you to do is gather together your last 12 months business bank and credit card statements. I will talk you through this exercise as if you have them physically printed in front of you, either that you receive them in the post or you printed them on your printer. But of course you can do this electronically as well. So what you want to do is you want to get that pile of business bank and credit card statements, grab yourself a red pen and a highlighter, and depending on the time of day, perhaps even a glass of wine. And then what I want you to do is go through the pile line by line by line, <clears throat> each expense item, each expense item, page by page, month by month. And first off with the red pen in your hand, ask yourself this question. Is this expense 100% necessary to keep the proverbial lights on in my business? If the answer is yes, you can circle that with your red pen. And as I say, I want you to go through this page by page, item by item, line by line. Then you can go back to the beginning and ask yourself this question. Is this expense delivering me a positive return in terms of time or in terms of money? <clears throat> and if the answer to that is yes, then you highlight it. And again, you're going through page by page, item by item, line by line. For some expenses, you'll be asking yourself this question 12 times because they are monthly recurring expenses. That's completely okay. So once you've done that, you want to go back through the bundle. And there will be things that are neither highlighted nor marked with your red pen. And the question is, what are those things? Those are, those th these are the things that I like to call money leaks. 
typically they're nice to have. So you have marked the things that are 100% necessary, 100% necessary. So you've got a, probably some nice to haves in your business. You've probably got some other stuff which maybe you didn't even know you had going out of your business. <clears throat> and it's time to assess those ones that you haven't marked. So the question is, what is the purpose of them? They might be nice to have, they might be things you've meant to cancel and forgot. But the important thing to note is those nice to have things, those money leaks, they are exactly that. Any business expense that you are spending that is not either 100% necessary or delivering you a positive return, what is it contributing to your business? It may not be contributing anything and therefore it's taking away money that would be in your family's pocket. Once you reverse that and you get out of that, you cancel, you downgrade, you change up those things that you can, you'll see some more money coming to you and your family. And in all honesty, when you start to see some more cash flowing to you, it feels like all that blood, sweat and tears is a little bit more worth it. So that is another thing that I highly urge you to do in your business. And this exercise, by the way, is something that I do on a quarterly basis in my own business because things change. Things change in a business and they morph and you need to make sure you're on top of this. And the third thing I want you to think about if you are feeling like you are a failure at everything and your business is failing are the offerings and the services that you provide. Are all the offerings and services you provide things that you love doing? If not, it's probably draining you. So make sure that those things that you are offering are things you love and that are profitable. Those two things need to exist together in order to carry on with them. If there are things that you hate doing, then you need to work out a way to exit from those things because they are just draining your energy draining your resources, and they are not going to lead to you loving your business and feeling like your business is a success. So making sure you understand what your offerings are delivering to you in terms of your enjoyment is going to be massively, massively important. And like I said, making sure that those offerings are profitable. <laughs> Another thing is you're, when you're looking at your offerings is you want to make sure that you don't have a ton of of products and services that you're trying to promote when there is only perhaps you or a very small marketing team or VA team or support behind you. Because as one person, it's very, very difficult to deliver a vast number of services. It can get very confusing, it can pull your energy, and it can just mean that you are split in too many ways. Focus is typically what gets us the results that we want, which leads us to the success that we want, however you define that. And of course, it's really important to remember that success is what you define. So failure and success are your definitions of that. So being really clear what success means to you and understanding how you will know once you've achieved it is incredibly important as well. So that is the fourth thing that I wanna speak about is setting those goals and milestones that you might have around your version of success, not anyone else's, but yours. Making sure you're really clear on what success means to you and what actions you then need to take in order to pursue that success. But of course, also understanding at the same time that as you move towards that idea of success, celebrating those small wins, celebrating those milestones too, because business is not a destination. It is a journey at all points in time. So feeling happy about where you are and feeling successful about where you are, even though it does not look like the end goal, is massively important in your own mindset as well and in your own business journey. So I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Please do come and subscribe to this channel. If you do, turn on the bell so that you know next time I have uploaded a video and you can come and watch and enjoy. Any questions, comments, do let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. So please, please do come, say hello and ask any questions on this 
or any other topics that you might have. And if you have any suggestions for any topics that you want me to cover, please do also let me know that in the comments. If you enjoy this episode and want to share it out to your own audience, then of course you can take a screenshot, share it out onto social media, make sure you tag me if you do. I am Annette underscore Ferbs on most platforms, including Instagram and Twitter. So do make sure you tag me if you are going to do that. Once again, thank you for tuning in so much. My name is Annette Ferguson. I'm CEO of Annette & Co, UK-based accounting firm. I'm a chartered accountant, certified profit-first professional and income strategist. And I help business owners take home more money from their business for them and their families to enjoy. Until next time.